Hey, good evening. It's Sunday night, December the 19th, and I'm so excited to welcome you to our video presentation for First Baptist Church of Sellersburg, Indiana. I'm Brother Steve, the pastor. If you're in Metro Sellersburg and you're watching this a little early, uh, join us at 5.30 tonight. We have a wonderful evening activity the last Sunday night before Christmas. We call it Cookies, Coffee, and Carols, and uh, we eat cookies and drink coffee or Dr. Pepper for about half an hour, and then we uh, uh, sing all the Christmas carols that we haven't sung yet or that we're not tired of yet and spend about 30, 40 minutes doing that and have just a wonderful time of fellowship together. But we'll be continuing our study for video purposes here of navigating the New Testament. And last time we looked at the introduction to 2 Timothy. And so tonight I want to share a passage of scripture with you out of that great book and just a few simple thoughts that I hope will encourage you. Uh, there is no question that our world has gone crazy. 2 Timothy chapter 3 says this, but know also that in the last days perilous times will come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. You know, we've, we live in a culture that no longer calls sin, sin, but actually despises the people who call sin, sin. You know, we used to agree that the Bible called something sin, it was bad. Now, if you say something's bad, they call you bad. And they despise those that are good. Verse 4 continues that they'll be traitors, they'll be heady, they'll be high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. It's like it's today's newspaper having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Now, believers. Now, he's writing this book to young Timothy to encourage him and to encourage those he's ministering to to stay faithful, even in the midst of those perilous times that come our way. Turn from those people who meet the description of these first few verses here in 2 Timothy chapter 3. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, that verse summarizes our culture in so many ways, doesn't it? We have more information. We have more uh, detailed information. But we just don't have a lot of truth. We've got all kinds of noise, all kinds of people talking, all kinds of information flowing. We know more today than we've ever known before, but for some reason, knowledge does not equal wisdom. And information does not always mean we apply truth to our lives. Just as Janice and Jane Breeze withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Now, Janice and Jambres were the magicians who matched Moses. When Moses would uh, demonstrate the power of God, they were the, the magicians who would uh, demonstrate that they could do the same tricks that Moses was doing. But God was true. Moses was his servant. And there's every culture, every generation faces those who could think they can manipulate the mind of people and lead them astray. Notice verse 9 reminds us that we shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs was. Hey, when Moses led the people out of the Egyptian bondage and across the Red Sea and into the wilderness and the land of promise, those false magicians didn't fare too well, did they? But Paul goes on to say in verse 10, But thou, Timothy, you have known my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my charity, my patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me as an Antioch of Iconia, of Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Hey, tough times are going to come. Bad times are going to come. Truth is not up for debate, although the world says truth is relative. That all sorts of unimaginable godlessness is happening in our culture, as it was in Paul's. Paul says, you've watched me. Guess what? 
no matter what's happened, I can say with clarity of heart that the Lord has delivered me out of them all. God is faithful. And then Paul says something we don't want to hear in the American church. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I'm sorry, I, I can't find in the text here where except Americans, except 21st century Americans, except the internet age Christians who, who cocoon themselves from the world. That is not the plan God has for you. You need to be out witnessing, sharing the truth, living the truth. And when you share the truth and live the truth, you will face persecution. He goes on to remind us, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You know, we have a generation of people who are so deceived, they don't know they're deceived, and they're deceiving others because they think they're sharing truth. If you're not certain what I'm talking about, watch some of these clowns on cable news. Well, they, they, they don't even believe truth when it's confronted to them. They've so deceived themselves into believing their agenda and their program and their purpose that they can't even acknowledge when they're wrong. But here's the encouragement for us all tonight. Continue thou the things which you hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing whom thou hast learned them. Paul's saying to young Timothy, listen, just stay faithful to the stuff, the things that you've learned about God, the things you've learned, the way you've been instructed. Stay faithful. Continue thou in those things. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't quit. Do not give up. Continue in these things. How that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. And then he tells us that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Let me remind you that he says, from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures. Now, of course, in Timothy's time, that's a reference to the Old Testament. We now have both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And it's these Holy Scriptures that are given by inspiration of God and that will help you to be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, let's fill in some of the blanks. Thou hast known the Scriptures, which were able to make thee wise unto salvation. Notice he doesn't say that knowing the Scriptures makes you saved. You see, there are a lot of people who know about the Bible. There are a lot of people who know some things within the Bible. It's not just a head knowledge. Notice what he says, that you've known from your childhood the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. You have to understand the truth of that and apply that and accept that truth so you can experience salvation. It's not automatic. Well, I've read three chapters. I memorized this verse. I'm born again. That's not what Jesus taught. That's not what the Bible teaches. But it's in the Word of God that we become wise or, or we become instructed how we can come to saving faith. And it's this Bible that was given by inspiration of God, the, the Greek word there, theonousta, the, the breathness, uh, the, the, the very essence of God, the, the God breathed, if you would. The, the scripture is, is God's essence. It is his breath. And because it is God's breath, it is profitable. It is good for you for doctrine. Now listen, anytime any teacher, any preacher, whether it's your local church or somebody on the internet, hey, if they're teaching something that's not confirmed by scripture, Turn them off. Find a new church. For all Scripture is given by that essence of God, that, that breath of God, and it is profitable for doctrine. The Bible teaches us our doctrine, not tradition, not the affairs of men, not the wind of the day, but the doctrine comes from the Word of God. Now also notice it says it's for reproof and for correction. The Bible teaches us proper doctrine. It also teaches us what to avoid and corrects us when we're wrong for instruction in righteousness. You see, the Bible has a goal that 
when we come to the place where we know Jesus and we experience the salvation, when the Bible opens our eyes to our need to be born again and through repentance towards God and we embrace the teachings of Jesus and we, we find new life in Him and the Bible teaches us then. It helps us. It, we see it. It's, it's beneficial for us. It teaches us doctrine. It cleans our clocks when we're clocks need to be cleaned. But it helps us to be righteous and find the way to live unto righteousness. Notice verse 17, that the man of God, that the person of faith, the man, woman, however you want to read that, of God, may be perfect. Now, the word perfect uh, has devolved in English since the translation that I'm reading from was written. To be perfect does not mean the way we think of perfection today, but it's the idea of completeness or maturity. You see, the Bible wants you to grow and to mature in Him so that you can be equipped and thoroughly furnished, thoroughly put in order, everything placed within you you need so that you can do the works that will help others see the need for a Savior. Paul warns young Timothy, the days are dark, but the Scripture brings light. The days are evil, but godliness <laughs> brings goodness. People are deceived and lost, but the Word of God makes us wise unto salvation. The world's going by its own standards and teachings and philosophies of men, but we go by the inspired Word of God, which guides us and guards us and governs us and helps us to be ready to reach maturity, a continual growth process so that we are able to do all that God has called us to do. The days are dark. We're living in them. My friend, I want to ask you very honestly. Could you ever imagine a day like today? We need to spend more time Investing ourselves in the inspired Word of God, letting it correct us, letting it guard us, letting it guide us, letting it govern us, so that we can be maturing and able to help others see their need for Jesus. And it may sting, you may suffer along the way, but God is faithful. And friend, if you're hurting tonight, the world seemingly has beat you up. The Word of God is breaking your heart right now, correcting you about sin in your life. We, hey, we all need to repent when we feel convicted. We all need to let the Bible guide us in instruction and righteousness and, and govern us and, and grow us to the place that we're able to do those good works. Right now, maybe you need to repent. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. But I know I am. And Lord, right now, your word is correcting me. And, and Lord, I, I want to be obedient to you. Guard my thoughts. Guide my hands. Govern my steps. Grow my witness. Help me to be more like Jesus. Friend, if you're not certain you know the Lord Jesus, why not go to our website, fbc-sellersburg.org. There's a link at the top that says the gospel. And there it'll answer all your questions. Email us. Tell us what God's doing in your life. Stop by and visit with us. We'd love to get to know you. We trust the Lord will bless you. And this Christmas season, may you know him more, serve him better, rejoice in his coming. May God bless you.